B-Pod Studios. This is Talkin' Rock. Talkin' Rock. Your backstage pass to some of your favorite rock artists. Here's your host, Meltdown. Well, it's been a while since I've had a chance to talk with uh, Mark Slaughter. I've seen him a couple times, uh, I'm pretty sure, here and there in concert. Uh, we talked about the time I saw him in Destin, Florida. Uh, that was, man, I guess it's got to be going on two years ago now. Anyways, uh, always good to uh, catch up with uh, Mark. We talk about a lot of things, including their recent trip to Peru, which uh, didn't go according to plan. Uh, we'll talk about that. Some new music on the horizon. Uh, uh, what he's what he did during the, the pandemic. Uh, just a ton of stuff with uh, Mark. Just a great guy. If you're in the uh, Southeast Michigan area, they're playing Saturday at this uh, new place down in Wyandotte, Michigan, uh, called Smugglers Run, which I'm really looking forward to uh, checking out. Looks like this big open bars. Matter of fact, I'm almost positive I've been there before, but it, it was named something else. But uh, this looks like a really cool, just great chill vibe kind of bar and it uh, looks like a huge room as well so slaughter once again playing this coming saturday at smugglers run in wyandotte michigan but first mark slaughter talks to us on talking rock after we got some computer issues taken care of well we've made contact with uh, mark now mark the first thing i wanted to tell you is that is that old guys like us whenever we have computer issues we have to look for the youngest person in the room that's how this works yeah, but if there's not somebody young, then you're just walking around like with your ass crack hanging out, you know. <laughs> this little inside baseball, we've been trying to get this uh, Zoom figured out for about five or ten minutes or so, but we've kind of we we got it figured out in our own old man way. So, how you doing, Mark? I'm doing good, man. Doing real good. I uh, I had a computer issue. My uh, my recording uh, computer took a dump on me today, a blue screen. So I've been uh, running around all day. So we're actually communicating through my laptop which is not uh, i had to wipe the dust off it to do this so here we are that's a pretty cool microphone dude you got a pretty cool setup there yeah it's, you know i have a lot of great here in the studio i you know during the whole covid time i i you know spent a lot of time here so i got my recording set up pretty pretty cool yeah i was gonna say so during covid i'm trying to remember if we've actually talked officially since then i mean i've seen you guys and stuff after that but i don't know if we've done an interview but were you doing were you recording stuff dicking around in the uh in the in the studio and that kind of thing throughout all of covid yeah i mean i did it's funny we even uh, you know a lot of my uh, musician friends we'd say hey let's do that song and we'd you know we did a. Uh, I know this is really outside but gino vanelli had a song called brother to brother that was probably one of the most technical uh, songs that I've played on and Joe Vanelli, his brother who produced the Gino Vanelli records. Uh, um, we got some of the original players on it and uh, we redid the track as a tribute to Mark Craney, who was also the drummer of uh, Jethro Tull. Mm. And, wow. uh, and uh, it was just, uh, it's a tribute to Mark Craney as brother to brother. If you type it in and we, and I did all the guitar work and the, and the voice on it. And it was, it was a blast to do. Yeah, that's so, cool. So I did the last time I saw you guys, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I probably saw you since, but I saw you down in, there in Destin, Florida the one time. What was it like to get back on stage after being locked up and not being able to see your fans? You know, it, it's it's really difficult for everybody in the in the side that you're just kind of wondering, when are we going to get out and when are we going to get back to normal? And our music, is, as, as we all remember back in the day, was all about getting out and very social and and hanging out and, uh, you know, tailgating and all that stuff. And, and it just changed the whole dynamic. And, it, you know, we've been uh, touring like crazy. We do fly dates. We fly into a show, do a show, and then fly back home. So we haven't stopped since, uh, since the gate opened up. But uh, it's great to be back for sure. Now you're going to be here in uh, Detroit in the uh, in the Wyandotte area, Smugglers Run. It's going to be the first time to be able to see this uh, venue, and it uh, looks like it's selling really well. All the VIPs look like they're uh, pretty much uh, sold out. So, what band are you bringing with you? I know it's always you, and sometimes it's Dana. And Dana and, you know who, who are you bringing with you to the show? It's, it's Dana. It's going to be Dana and Blando, and we have a, a gentleman named Jordan Canada who is a, in Adrenaline Mob, and he's a fantastic drummer. Will, who's been playing with us as well, is uh, out doing Evanescence stuff, and uh, Jordan has been kind of our uh, go-to guy at the moment. And uh, what a great player. Young kid. He was born. I mean, the crazy thing is, is when we got his passport, when we said, hey, let's let's you know get you in there in case we're doing stuff overseas. And, 
And uh, we look at the passport and we realize this, this kid was born on the day that our first record was put out. Is that right? So, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, so he's like, you know, he, he's, uh, he's dating us pretty good, but he, uh, he is a fantastic drummer and we're really looking forward to uh, bringing him up there. I think people really enjoy the show. And of course, Detroit has a lot of great memories for us. You know, we've been, you know, that basically Detroit kept all these rock bands alive through, through all the most difficult times period. Yeah, I just went up on stage the other day and inter- introduced uh, Pop Evil, and it's so cool. You know, um, I grew up in Buffalo, but I've been here for, you know, 27 years. And, it, you know, and it's like all the bands that were out before you guys came around with the, you know, with the with the Nugent's and Alice Coopers and the Bob Seegers. But since I've been here, too, with uh, all the great musical heritage, talk about maybe some of your favorites from the Motor City growing up. You know, a, a- uh, first of all, first of all, my very first shows that I did, uh, dating back to our prior band, the Vinnie Vincent Invasion, where I literally was a guitar teacher and put my guitar down in a stand, uh, was in uh, the Michigan area. We did Lansing, Michigan, then we did another show, and then we did two nights uh, with Alice Cooper. This is in 1986. Mm-hmm. where we opened up and we played Hell Night and then we played on Halloween with Alice Cooper. And it was the coolest thing ever because, you know, first of all, I'm a fan of Alice Cooper. And second of all, you know, I was never in Detroit before. And all of a sudden, you know, that became kind of like my home sweet home because that's where I really started professionally, in my opinion. Now, I was just talking with the William Duvall from Allison Chains the other day. And, of course, uh, uh, even the guys from uh, Skid Row just last week, and they all talked about the impact that Kiss had on their life growing up as, as early ki- as kids and stuff. And I, I'm assuming that those shows were played at Kobo. Is that correct? Um, yes, that was at Kobo. And as well as the, you know, the Kiss shows, you know, were there. And, uh, you know, look, we and also uh, uh, Pine Knob as well, you know up there in, in the Pine Knob area. We, that was the other staple for, for all the, the rock shows up there. Mm. But, uh, you know, it's, it, you know, then we ended up doing the palace as well. And, um, you know, so all that whole area, I mean, that's just kind of where we kind of came in and out of, in and out of. And, uh, um, you know, again, it's the, the rock and this Detroit rock city for a reason, you know, and that's just because kiss said it because it is, I mean, it's a rock and roll staple. Yeah. And of course, you're bringing your show, like we said, Saturday to a smuggler's run in a Wyandotte. Uh, do you still uh, chomp at the bit to get on stage and tour and stuff? I love to get out and tour. I mean, it's it's great, especially when you're coming back to old home week. We get to see a lot of friends that we haven't seen in a long time. And and, uh, you know, what a blast to to, you know, go out there and, and hang. I mean. Uh, a gentleman named Mark Farner, who uh, I'm recording his record from Grand Funk. Uh, he lives up in uh, the upper Mich- you know, in Michigan as well. And uh, that's another staple in Detroit. Blando, our guitar player, he's from Flint, Michigan. So, I mean, the ties to Detroit is definitely like an old home week for us. Tell me about this uh, Mark Farner project that you're doing. What can you well, tell? He's, he's doing a solo record. We've done some re-records and we've done it here in my studio in Tennessee. He's come down here and we're also doing things uh, – through the old internet where you send files back and forth to each other. And uh, what an incredible talent. And uh, I'm truly blessed to know him as, as a human being and also as a musician. What a, what a cool dude, man. What, now, a, what have you known him for a while or are you just getting to know him or what? I've known him a while. I met him through the rock and roll fantasy camp in about 2007, 2008. And, uh, we, we've always, we were brothers right from the beginning. I mean, we're, you know, we, we have the same mindset. It's the, it's the Cherokee, you know, connection is blood and, and, uh, he is just, I mean, what a great talent, man. You know, and again, if you go back into those grand funk railroad songs, those are the ones that they're really impacting me as a young kid, you know? And that was my, that was what I listened to when I was riding my bike around with my radio taped with duct tape to my handlebars, you know? Yeah, no doubt. I remember those days for sure. What other projects are you working on? Anything else? No, I'm just kind of focused on that stuff with Mark. And then, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about getting some new songs together, Dana. And, 
Blando and, you know, possibly even Bloss were kicking it all around trying to figure out what our next step is. There's a uh, wildlife uh, uh, box set that is uh, going to be released through kissmywaxrecords.com kiss my wax and that's pretty cool it's a lot of vintage stuff for those vinyl enthusiasts and uh we're you know we're just kind of doing little projects like that and just trying to figure out uh you know what what's fun for everybody that's really where we're at uh talk about the uh the new music because i I heard you guys might have some uh stuff uh kicking around is is do you have anything any ideas demoed out or anything like that no, but you know, it, Dana and I, when we wrote uh, "Stick It To You," we wrote it in about two and a half weeks. So it's, it doesn't take us long to write the songs. It's more about getting us all in the same room and and uh, you know, just turning on, you know, making sure the computer works like I'm <laughs> like I'm dealing with right now. Letting technology work as long as technology works, we can get things done pretty quick. But. We don't have a set date. We're just kind of doing all these shows and we're all mar- kind of earmarking the calendar when we have holes in the schedule where we can do that. Now you're going to bring, will, will Blas play on the record? And, and, and like, what is his like position with the band? Is he like, obviously always a member of the band, but whenever he can join. When he can, when he can do that. And, and, you know, he has, uh, he has family commitments and he has other things that he's, he's doing right now. And, and, you know, Bloss is and always will be a, 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 a big part of the band. Um, you know, he was the original player. Jordan's a fantastic drummer. So I don't know, you know, when we get to the time of recording, it's kind of like who's available and what works, but I know that uh, we're working on a biopic right now, and obviously Bloss will be a part of that. I think that's probably once we get something like that out is when we'll release something where Bloss comes back and we really go for it uh, as, as as close to original as we can. Yeah, that's cool. The biopic, huh? you, you dig up some old uh, old footage, some old videos and stuff? Yeah, that all started during the COVID time. We started going through our drawers that, you know, you throw all your junk in a drawer and then you come back and you go, man, what's this? And and then you start sending it back to each other. Hey, dude, you remember this? So we we ended up finding um, a 24 track tape, which we had uh, uh, basically uh, cooked. And then we took all the files off it. It was a show we did at Universal uh, in a Dick Clark production. And we did a whole show in between doing the tapings. So we have a full live show with Tim Kelly on it that, that uh, I'm mixing. We're trying to pull together for a, uh, for a release, probably through BMG. Oh, no kidding. That's cool. So yeah, we're, so we're pulling all that together right now. And there are a few of those songs that we threw on this wildlife compilation in this box set that that'll be in there. But uh, that was a great find. It really was. Yeah, that's like, uh, yeah, dusting off some of the classics right there. I can imagine just uh, finding that and, you know, probably the shock of yourself, huh? Yeah. I mean, you know, and you realize, you know, you're 25, 26 years old at the time that you did it. You kind of go, wow, what a trip. You know, we were kids. And but, uh, you know, we 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 love what we do and we still continue to make the music and and, you know, in the spirit of uh, Detroit and in uh, rock and roll and muscle cars. That's, uh, that's what we love and continue to, to embrace. It sounds like this, uh, this interview almost just took a turn to Ted Nugent for a second. That's a, well, that's uh, you know, <laughs> Derek St. Holmes, he's a buddy of mine and uncle Ted is uncle Ted. So you, know, you can't run, you can't run away uh, from, from the roots where you came from. Yeah. Derek just celebrated his uh, 70th birthday. As did Billy Sheehan, one of your neighbors down there. Of some sort. Yeah. 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 And, and, uh, you know, both of them are, are fantastic and nothing has ever changed with the way those guys rock. I mean, they're both fantastic. Now I just talked to Billy a couple of weeks ago and it's funny. Cause like, you know, there's a lot of musicians down by where you live. Do you ever venture down into the city or are you just one of these guys that kind of hangs out in the suburbs and stuff and just kind of does your own thing? I'm uh, beyond the suburbs. I'm out in farmland here. Okay. I, I have like 12 acres with a little mini farm and we got cats and dogs and chickens and, and uh, I don't know, hundred plus guitars floating around here. So, you know, it's, it's inspiring. There's enough time for you to figure things out in your own head to where you can, you know, make some music, but I, I just don't go downtown much. It seems like it's more bachelor bachelorette parties, you know, than there is anything that's, uh, that's, uh, tying me into the rock and roll side of it. But 
I, I have done a few things in the past. I did a couple of jams with Rudy Sarzo and Vinny Apice and, and uh, you know, I've had some, some great jams out here. I mean, the musicianship is just fantastic. And yeah, and, it's, uh, it's funny it, on the last 20 years, how everyone's kind of just moved there. Well, because it's a little bit, this is kind of, if you look at the map of America, you see, you know, basically Nashville is a heart of the nation. It's right there. It's easy to get in and out. You can drive up to Detroit. You can drive down to Florida. You can, so it's, it's easy to, to fly in and out of or drive around and, and uh, do your thing. So, you know, again, the Midwest and, and uh, Detroit and Chicago and all those areas are the place where this kept rock and roll alive all these years. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, looking back on your career and stuff, you probably spent a lot of time on the uh, West coast as well, but do you think that that was good for you in your, in the early days of your career, maybe just the, the wild part of your career? I think that, you know, look, California is California, New York's New York. But the truth is, is the Midwest, when you get into Detroit and, and Chicago, we spent more time, I'll never forget when we were going through the rough time when, you know, the music was down and, and, and people tried to forget that they were having a good time and wanted to be depressed. And, and, uh, you know, women were looking like dudes, uh, it's at that point in time, it was like, uh, we were, we only place we played probably more than anywhere was in Michigan. We just, it seemed like that was like the magnet that always pulled us back to that area. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of people here. They work hard and they play hard and they definitely want to have a good time when they go out for sure. Um, yeah. So um, I was talking with uh, I was talking with somebody and uh, <laughs> I think I was talking with uh, with Jeff. I've got to hear this story when you guys were in Lima, Peru during a coup attempt. Oh, yeah. 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 It's crazy. We So so I fly down to do the show uh, in Peru. And when was and this- we get there? This this was this year. OK. Yeah, this year. And so, so we fly down, fly down there and, you know, and the promoter's like, you know, this is it. And you do a rehearsal. So I go jam with this band and we do our thing. And then the next morning I go down to the lobby and you can see the promoter and all his buddies like have this look on their face, like a, you know, a train hit the the hotel and I'm like, Hey, what's going on? And they're like, uh, we don't think the show is going to play. And I go, why? And they said, well, our president is, is, there's a whole coup going on and this is happening and it was all unfolding and they're running off with cell phones. And one minute the show's on the next minute it's off. And, and it was funny being there was a different thing. The, uh, so we go in, go down, go down. And they said, basically they go, you know what? They said, um, you know, the, the, the president is trying to flee to the Mexican embassy. And we're like, what? And I guess he was trying to leave, uh, the government building there and all the, the locals in, in Peru, basically they, they parked their cars and took the keys out of their car. So his car couldn't get over to the embassy and they arrested the guy. And then the vice president gets thrown in as the, uh, uh, as the new president and the show went on, but it, you know, as soon as we left, of course, all hell broke loose and people weren't able to fly out. So we got out just by the skin of our pants, but, you know, those type of things, you can't write that, you know, it's just, it's crazy experiences in other countries. And you realize, you know, what it's like here in America, you know, it's a a whole different thing, you know, there's gotta be some parts of the world that you guys just won't go to. Right. Well, you know, there's every single time when it comes into Brazil that we're, we're slated to go out to Brazil, every time we're doing, you know, book to do something, they say it's not safe to go and they, the promoters will cancel the show and just say it's not safe now. Mm. It's a most bizarre thing, but uh, you know, that, that happens in this business and, and uh, you know, it is what it is uh, Japan. We go to often. We love Japan, you know, not as much as uh, Billy Sheehan and Mr. Big goes over there, yeah. but we go over there a few times and uh, you know, great country to, that, you know, that, that loves the music as well. Yeah. Uh, speaking of keys, uh, Duke told me he wanted me to ask you about the uh, lock keys in the uh, truck rental. Oh, yeah. So so we were out. I, I might have been coming up to it might have been up in your area. Um, we were going to we came by the station 
and uh, Duke and uh, Wes are two bodyguards at the time. They we go to the to the radio station. We get down uh, into uh, we get down the ra- the radio interview. We go down to the car, and Wes goes to Duke. Where are the keys? And he goes, I don't have the keys. And he goes, Well, I don't have the keys. And we're like, Dude, we got to go shower. We got a show tonight. And they're like, And Wes says to Duke, Go get the keys. And he literally tore the back seat out of the rental car like a dog, like a pit bull, just like ripped it apart. I've never seen any type of demolition from a, from a human being like what Duke did. It was pretty funny, but, uh, you know, that was a long story to the rental car company, but, uh, yeah, that's just part of the thing. You know, you just got whatever it takes to get to the show, you know? Yeah, Duke is a pretty big guy, but for those that don't know, Wes was uh, uh, God rest his soul was six foot ten, four hundred pounds, and uh, I, I know you saw him spring into action a few times. That must have been. Oh awesome. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. He used to pick me up and just say, "We're going," and he just literally carried me by my by my ankles off to the bus. I mean, he was he was a big guy. Yeah, I've, I've heard some of the uh, stories from Duke. He walked me through a bar one time that you could not shoehorn another person into, like there was nobody in there. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Isn't it funny? He's like, coming through, coming through, coming through. <laughs> he's just like, he's just like doing this to people and people are just moving out of the way. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, and you know, it's, it's funny. It's just like you. I mean, we've had, we've had so many great friends along the way that have just been a part of our life and, you know, go in and out. I mean, we all do what we do in life, but you know, we've been a part of this incredible ride of music and, and fun and, uh, and great memories and good times, you know? Yeah, no doubt. And it's a, it's a career, uh, well-lived and well-spent and, uh, man, I'll tell you what, it's uh, just getting stronger. Maybe some new music, a biopic, like you were talking about, uh, coming up in the, in the near future somewhere, but we know for sure, uh, smugglers run at Wyandotte, uh, this coming weekend. So, Hey, Mark, want to thank you for taking the time out here on this, uh, beautiful, uh, spring day. Happy spring to you, uh, to, uh, happy talk- spring to you too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a little chilly up there, isn't it? It's not too bad. It's actually like 51, which maybe. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there's no ice fishing. So, yeah, I guess that's good. No, so maybe when you come up here this weekend, uh, who knows? Maybe there'll be some bikinis. I'm, I don't know. Oh, yeah, there you go. Well, we'll, we'll check the parking lot. <laughs> hey, Mark, thanks so much for the time. Appreciate it. Thank you, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, he did that whole interview while talking to me through his phone, through his microphone, because he couldn't hear me for some reason in his studio. So, uh, thanks to Mark for uh, persevering through. And like I said before, Smugglers Run this coming Saturday in uh, downtown Wyandotte. Going to be a great show. I can't wait to see Dana as well. Dana's such a great guy. And uh, Blando's such an awesome guy as well. Great guitar player, too. He's been with the band for uh, quite a long time. So looking forward to seeing all the guys. And uh, the new drummer, too. So there you have it. Hey, hope you guys uh, dig this. Some more interviews are uh, coming. And uh, I talked about this before, but I got this track-by-track track series uh, I've done two episodes so far. I'm going to try to get Mark and Dana and Blas on and talk about the uh, debut Slaughter record track by track. Uh, but we've talked with uh, Brent Smith from Shinedown, also Jesse James Dupree from Jackal about their debut records as well. So it doesn't typically have to be about debut records, but uh, those were big ones uh, for both those bands with both those albums, if not mistaken, cracking the top five as far as songs uh, with at least four of them. So, yeah, check that out if you get a chance. Uh, track by track, that's on my page at Meltdown. Uh, I'm sorry, WRAF.com slash Meltdown. You can check out everything there. Uh, a lot of these interviews, like this one today, done with Zoom. You can watch any of them as well just by punching up the website. But thank you guys so much for checking out Talk and Rock. We'll do it all over again very shortly. Thank you for listening to Talk and Rock with Meltdown. You can help this podcast grow by giving it a five-star rating and writing a review on Apple and iTunes. Plus, feel free to subscribe and share it with your friends. Until next time, thanks for listening to Talk and Rock.